Welcome to you. Robin, Europe. thank you. Do you make it out here often? I try to get out here a couple times a year. You know, this is uh, a market where we have a lot of partners, a lot of them in this room, and also uh, a lot of employees. Actually, Dublin's our second largest office. We have 500 people in Dublin, so Great. try to get to Dublin especially. So uh, Facebook needs no introduction, uh, but about you, your role at Facebook is quite diverse. Um, you're VP of cor Corporate Development, Partnerships, M&A, Community Operations. Um, you also clean the floors and fix the furniture when <laughs> something happens? Or how, do you do, how do you combine all that? I have a good team. I've been at the company for eight years, so it's been a lot of fun to, to watch it grow and to be a part of the growth. Right. I think you told me when you joined, there were only about 100 employees at Facebook, so That's it's right, a very yeah. relatively small. Yeah. Um, since then, it's grown tremendously, obviously. Um, platform now, 1.3 billion users. Um, lots of developers and startups on the platform developing for Facebook. Yeah. Uh, but then, developers and startups only have so much time. Um, and there are multiple platforms. You're not the only um, game in town. So there's you know, Amazon, Microsoft, iOS, Android. Um, what makes um, Facebook so special for startups and developers to build yeah, so our approach to developers, and a lot of them are in this room, um, is really born out of our own experience as a, a developer ourselves across all of these platforms. And the story of Facebook uh, becoming a mobile company uh, has been well documented. But as we looked at that experience, what we found is that there were really three things that were critical for us. One, we had to build our applications for each of the different operating systems uh, in mobile. Two is we had to find ways to grow uh, the people using our products. And three is monetizing, ultimately, to, to create a business. And so our, our strategy with developers is really to try to be the cross-platform platform, where we help developers build, grow, and monetize their applications. And we have features and products that we offer across each of those pillars. Um, so we're not competing with the, the operating systems themselves. We're really a layer that sits on top that helps developers in this ever growing, complicated world of developing for mobile. Fair enough. Um, you obviously have a global view on partnerships. Um, we're in Europe now. Can, what, can you tell us about Europe and the partnerships that you have here uh, that makes it so specific? Sure. We have a great uh, partnership team here in Europe led by Julianne Cordonu, many of you know. Uh, really, Europe is the driver of our games business, uh, which is one of the biggest areas of our platform. We, uh, Europe is the number one market for games on Facebook, three of the top five developers. Uh, are from Europe, led by King, who's our largest developer in games. Uh, it's not just true on Facebook. If you look at Android, seven of the top 10 grossing apps on Android are from European developers. So this is a, uh, a market where you know, the developer ecosystem is really robust, um, and we're, you know, we're investing significant resources here, both in terms of our partnerships and also in terms of operations. We have, as I mentioned earlier, a very large presence here in Dublin. Um, we have over 50 nationalities represented in our office here. And, uh, and the, the team here works across our platform. They work across our advertising uh, business. Um, they work across our uh, community operations uh, area, as you mentioned before. So Europe is a big, important area for Facebook and a, and a, a market where we spend a lot of time. Right. Um, so moving on to um, one of your other roles is M&A. Um, now, Facebook has already proven that it's not afraid to make big and bold bets. Uh, especially since the public market listing um, with you know, Instagram and WhatsApp and Oculus. Um, there have been some questions about that strategy. Like, you know, is it wise to spend that much money on uh, stuff that doesn't have any direct financial upside? Um, is it wise to move into hardware uh, with such a bang? Um, so can you shed a little bit more light about Facebook's general uh, M&A strategy? What do you look for in companies um, in general? Yeah, so I think the best way to think about our M&A strategy is really in the context of kind of the company strategy. And the way we talk about this is we basically have uh, a strategic approach to efforts that are going to be kind of over the next three years, five years, and 10 years. So I'll just kind of talk about each of those and how M&A has played a role. So over the next three years, our focus is really on continuing to serve our existing communities. We have 1.3 billion people, as you said, on Facebook, and the businesses that are being built on top of that. Um, and a big part of the way we're serving those businesses is through our investment in ad technology. And uh, there we've done a couple of acquisitions. We bought Atlas, and we're, we recently relaunched that. And more recently, we, we acquired LiveRail, which actually had a, a very significant presence here in Europe. Um, so you know, that's kind of the three-year part of our strategy. M&A is a big piece of that. Um, over five years, we're looking at really growing our new communities to a billion-plus uh, people. 
And there you have a combination of um, organic products that we've built, like Messenger and Search, as well as uh, products that we've acquired, like Instagram and WhatsApp. And so the strategy there is to continue to invest and grow those products and those user bases, as well as turn them into large businesses in their own right. And then over a 10-year period, we're really focused on connecting the world through internet.org, understanding the world through our investments in AI, and then uh, investing in uh, the platforms of the future. And there, we've uh, done some M&A as well. We acquired a company called Prite, which is also based here in Europe, uh, to help us with our internet.org initiative and partnering with mobile operators around the world. Um, and on the you know, platforms of the future, we bought Oculus. Um, they, you know, Brendan was here yesterday talking about that. That's obviously a really exciting area. So you know, M&A kind of fits into the company strategy. And a lot of the things that we are doing are uh, developed in-house. And, and then some of the things we, we go out and look to acquire. Nice. Um, so uh, moving on to media, because obviously a lot of the content that appears on Facebook is generated by users and shared by users. Um, but also a lot of the content comes from big media companies who are obvious partners for you. Um, there was a recent uh, report in the New York Times by David Carr, who's around here somewhere, um, who said that Facebook is reportedly talking to publishers to bring their content directly into the Facebook application, because most of the media consumption now takes place in mobile apps. There's no question that that's going to grow. Um, is there any truth to these reports that the publishers are going to bring their content in the newsfeed directly and lose some of the control that they have over monetization? So, so media is a big category for us. And you know, the way we look at our partnerships with media companies is similar to how we think about our relationship with developers or advertisers. These are big ecosystems. And ecosystems really work well and are stable long term when there's, when there's value exchange. Um, and so we think about how do we create value exchange so that everybody's winning. And actually, for me, this is something that really dates back to when I first joined Facebook eight years ago. Um, in the very early days that I, that I joined the company, we signed a big uh, partnership with Microsoft. And it was pretty exciting. In those, in those early years, Microsoft, uh, that partnership was generating 50% of the company's revenue. So it was a big deal for us. And I remember in that very first review with Mark, where we were talking about the partnership and reviewing the early results, I kind of was you know, going on about how much value it was creating for Facebook, how much money we were making, and so on. And Mark kind of stopped me uh, you know, a few minutes into it and said, this is great, but how's it working for Microsoft? And that was like a really key moment for me. You know, he had hired me from Amazon to run business development for the company. Here this guy was 22 years old and had you know, really never done this before. But his instincts on partnering and his instincts on value exchange were even better than mine. And so as we've kind of built these ecosystems over the years, we've always come back to how do we create uh, you know, a, a stable, long-term relationship with partners. And our media partnerships is exactly that. We think about that in the context of the way that um, you know, Facebook is benefiting, which is that we're getting all of this great content whether it's news or, or video or entertainment. Um, the people who use our products benefit because they are uh, you know, able to discover new content that they may not have found before and share it with their friends. And um, our partners benefit because they get uh, traffic, and ultimately, they're able to monetize that with their business models. And so you know, we're constantly engaged with uh, all of these ecosystem partners around how can we do better, how can we do more. What, are, what does the future look like? And media partners fall into that as well. Great. Um, so rather than ask you what's the next big thing for Facebook, just kind of a broad question that can't be answered, um, what is the thing that Facebook is working on right now that a lot of people don't quite realize that's either underreported on or lots of people just don't, are not aware of it? You know, one of the things that people have been talking more and more about recently is our video platform. And that's, I think, fairly well understood now. We have over a billion views a day on our native video platform, and it's growing really quickly. Um, but something that people may not be as aware of is the intersection of the video platform and our public content uh, initiatives. So some people may be thinking about our video platform in the context of the Ice Bucket Challenge, which was an incredible global phenomenon. A lot of that was our friends and family kind of sharing video, taking video on their mobile device and sharing it. Um, but increasingly, what we're seeing now is that celebrities and public figures are really starting to take advantage of this new opportunity to connect with their fans through video on Facebook. 
Um, a couple of recent examples, U2 did a Q&A, a video Q&A on Facebook. One of their fans wrote in and asked why they um, inserted their new album into iTunes without that person asking. And Bono did this incredible apology, <laughs> very eloquent, um, explaining the thinking behind that, um, got a lot of news coverage. But all of that was made possible through this video Q&A on Facebook. Uh, Wayne Rooney just recently uh, posted a thank you to all of his fans for all the birthday wishes on Facebook. He's got 25 million people on Facebook who are now following him. And you're seeing it all over, all over the world with celebrities and their, and their fan base. The other thing we're doing that's also relatively new and probably not well understood is we just recently launched a new product specifically for public figures that we call Mentions. And the Mentions app gives these people a way to see in a feed all of the times that people are talking about them on Facebook. And then they have the ability to magically kind of dip in and have a direct conversation with their fans. So this happened recently in the US, my favorite story. Larry Fitzgerald is a wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals in the, in the National Football League. And he was scrolling through his mentions feed and noticed that um, somebody asked the question to their friends on Facebook, should I trade Larry Fitzgerald in my fantasy draft? <laughs> And he sees this and he thinks, I'm going to go talk to that person. So he goes into that post, he comments as himself, no, don't trade me. <laughs> I'm going to do well this week. You should hang on to me. And you can imagine that fan's delight at having heard directly from Larry Fitzgerald after posting something to his friends. So there's a lot of really interesting things that are happening around this intersection of public content, celebrities, video that I think is going to become more well understood going forward, but is really just starting, getting started now. Right. Um, so you mentioned the Mentions app, and something that's um, a quite a recent development is that Facebook has started unbundling um, its mobile applications into you know, Messenger and uh, different, different areas. Um, there's some criticism um, from startups specifically who are doing similar things, like a, a focused mobile app that Facebook um, also starts, rather than within the Facebook app. Um, so how do you deal with the criticism from, from developers who are building the same kind of stuff that you're unbundling? You know, one of the things that we had to really come to realize and un understand ourselves as we made this transition from being primarily a desktop company to a mobile company is that the way that pe behavior on mobile is different and the way that people expect to engage with applications on mobile is through these very focused, very dedicated experiences. And so, you know, we didn't fully internalize that for a while, and it was part of the challenge and the struggle as we really transitioned the company. But once we did, we moved quickly to start to, to uh, offer that. Um, and probably the biggest example of us doing that was um, pulling the Messenger experience out of our main app into a separate dedicated application, which has been um, you know, really important for that product and for the, the use case there. In order to trust when you, when you get a notification that somebody's messaged you, messaged you on Facebook, that that's something that you should go look at and, and potentially reply to. We needed to be able to decouple it from the general notifications that you get from your Facebook application. Otherwise, it's impossible to tell whether it's an urgent message or whether it's something that can wait. And, and so that was a big part of the, the rationale for that. And what we found is that now that it's a separate application, um, you know, it's, it's much more usable for people. I would say that this doesn't change the way that our product strategy has evolved over the 10 years that we've been in business. And um, developers who are building on our platform know the things that we do today and where we're going with that and how we think about the platform. And we also have a huge partnership team all around the world to engage with folks who have questions about that so that we can give them as much visibility as possible. Perfect. Dan, I'm afraid we're out of time. Uh, thank you very much for coming to Europe. Thank you for having me. And thank Good you for chatting. Thanks a lot.